Hi guys, welcome to another episode of SCN. On today's show, we're going to be talking about where to take some great buying advice and where not to get it. And to end off with, as always, we've got a video highlighting some of the worst cars ever made. Now, over the last couple of shows, we've talked constantly about buying and selling. We've given you some of the best advice, I think, in the world. Now, on that note, we've got to talk about where to get and where not to get great buying advice from. And there's a couple of areas you really want to try and avoid like the plague. Now, the first, the first place that I tend to find bad advice coming from is friends and family. So you're selling your car, you're taking advice from uncles and aunts, all good and well, unless they're absolutely connected to the industry, unless they absolutely understand the nature of the particular car that you happen to be selling, be very careful about the advice that you take. Your friends and family are always going to want to see you do well. And as a result, they tend to be a bit partisan. So you've advertised your car for 100 grand possibly, it's really only worth 80. They're going to make you hold out for the 100. In your heart of hearts, you know 80 is probably the right number. You've probably done your homework. Your friends and family are giving you advice. You're going to take their advice. You're going to wait for the big money. Don't. They want to see you get ahead. I get that. But they're not coming from a clear place of interest. They are too partisan. They want too much for you to succeed and as a result you're going to end up holding out for the wrong money and you may lose a couple of deals on the way down the line. The next place where you don't want to be taking buying advice from either is anybody you're busy transacting with. So if you're busy doing a deal on a car whether you're buying or selling try not to take too much advice from the other party. The other party's clearly got an agenda. It's either to sell you a car or to buy your car nicely. So taking advice from anybody you're busy contracting with is never a good thing. Now the one, people, the one set of people that give some of the worst buying advice in the world for my money are motoring journalists. And I say this with absolute respect to all of the motoring journalists who may watch this show at some point and I've no doubt that you're going to get a copy of this particular show. Now I sit at home on the weekend, I turn on the TV, there's various different shows highlighting various different bits and pieces going on within the motoring community. We're talking about guys restoring cars, we're talking about guys at auctions, that's not, some, that's not bad advice. The journalists that irritate me the most are the journalists that offer genuine buying advice to buyers and sellers, the buyers and seller guides kind of shows. Now the problem is, with respect, these journalists have never bought and sold a car in their lives, possibly their own, maybe once. Now this is problematic for me. When I listen to people writing in or phoning in asking for some genuine selling advice or genuine buying advice, it's coming from people that have never bought or sold a car in their lives. And I can almost guarantee they've never been in a dealership scenario where they've had to buy cars for a living. So when you've actually transacted on a car, when you've bought and sold 50, 100, 1,000 cars, when you've been in the industry 10, maybe 20 years, and you can genuinely speak from experience, then please give advice. But while you're a journalist who gets paid to drive certain cars and say certain things, please refrain from giving any kind of buying advice to any kind of viewer at any kind of time. I beg you, stop. Now having said that, I've now taken family and friends out of the equation when it comes to advice. I've managed to take out anybody you're transacting with and again I've taken out a few motoring journalists who advice I don't think is worth the, the paper it's written on. Now who are you left with? Well after all of the shows we've done, after the 50, almost 50 episodes that we've put together, we've given some of the best buying and selling advice based on 25 years in the motor industry and I say this with respect. I've bought and sold thousands of motor cars. I do it on a daily basis. So when I'm giving you advice, it's based on what's going on today, not what happened 10 years ago or 20 years ago, about what happened to me yesterday. I take all of the knowledge that I know and I apply it to these shows. So when I'm giving you buying advice, take it. And I say that with absolute respect. Now, understanding the nature of the shows we've done and having watched the shows, there's nobody better, certainly, to sell your car than you. You understand the asset better than anybody else. You drive it on a daily basis. You understand the pros and cons of the car you happen to be selling. It's not rocket science to go online and as we say every week, compare the price of your car against the price of every other car out there. Have a look at the condition of the car being advertised and in your heart of hearts, you know if your car is slightly better or slightly worse. So price it accordingly. Take your own experiences based on what you've learnt on the show and your understanding of the asset you own and apply them. I guarantee you, you're going to do better off taking your own advice than from any of those other parties we've talked about earlier in the show. And again, what you need to do is this, if you want to offer finance, if you want to offer warranties on the car that you happen to be selling, don't be shy to get hold of the guys at Motifin. These guys will make your transaction so much easier to do. Finance arranged, all of the good bits and pieces. Turn yourself into a motor dealer for this one transaction you happen to be doing. But my advice is, take your own advice. Now guys, when it comes to some real bad buying advice, I feel sorry for the poor guys who bought some of these. These are the worst selling cars of all time.
Hello, I hope I don't see any of those cars on the road. I certainly haven't seen any in a while. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and don't forget to smash that like button. Check out the original videos on the link below. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe if you haven't already. I've been Nick, it's been real. We'll see you soon.